Uh, okay, I am gonna bring us to a space of quiet and uh, let you know what would be helpful for your practice today. Um, as always, having access to two blocks or two thick hardcover books will serve you well. Um, a strap or a long piece of rope. And I didn't put this on the list. So let me give you about a minute to go and get one if you don't have it handy. The chair is back. Um, a good way to offer support, relief, modifications. If you are feeling at your most energetic, you're feeling an enormous amount of strength, uh, you will not need one. But if you do want to get one, like I said, it will serve us well. So take a moment just to get your props in order. And we'll begin in just a minute. And if you are already organized, if you are practicing and embodying the Musar trait of order, that is one of the Musar traits, then you can sit in silence. You can take any opening stretches that serve you well. And I'll give you just about another half minute since I sprung the chair on you. And I know some of you might need to go and grab one. Okay, Shabbat Shalom. It's good to see everyone. I hope you are wrapping up a wonderful week. Um, if there is anybody in the virtual yoga studio that I don't yet know, my name is Zach. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And um, we are gonna get started. So as those of you who have been practicing with any amount of regularity know, um, since we started the secular new year, 2021, we have de been devoting our yoga practice to the exploration and integration of a tradition in Judaism called Musar. Musar is a collection of soul traits. And the idea is that one at a time, for a few days at a time or a week at a time, we concentrate on each one of about 18, no coincidence, in the symbolism and meaning of Judaism, but we focus on one of these soul traits at a time. And the practice of yoga is a wonderful opportunity physically, spiritually, emotionally to focus on these soul traits. And what I find to be very interesting is that yoga also has an emphasis on many of these same soul traits that are part of Judaism. It's one of the things that just makes me feel like there is so much oneness in the world. So today, we are going to be focusing on the soul trait of moderation. Shabil hazahov is what it's referred to in Hebrew. Shabil is a way, zahov is golden. So moderation is considered to be the golden way. And in Sanskrit, there is a parallel value or soul trait called brahmacharya which is a little bit more abstract. And it, it has a meaning that uh, essentially is behavior that's consistent with the creator or the infinite. And translated differently, it's a right use of energy. And the idea is similar in Judaism that you practice moderation to channel your, uh, your energy in the right way. So our practice today is going to be devoted to moderation, to keeping our energy, our intention in balance. And one thing that I want to share up front is that moderation does not mean, in my perception, always being in the middle. That is a very parv way of living. Um, for those of you who might not know the, the term parv, it's, it's neither this nor that. It's just kind of in the middle. So it doesn't always mean being in the middle. We're encouraged to indulge. We're encouraged to enjoy. We're also encouraged to have moments where we're more calm and serious and reflective. 
we're encouraged to find challenge, to seek out heat, and we're encouraged to relax and seek out peace. So living this life of moderation is ultimately walking in that center lane by making sure that there's balance between the two. So I encourage you to practice that as we flow through this yoga sequence. And we're gonna get started in a pose called Viparita Karani, um, which is a fancy way of saying legs up the wall. So I'm gonna demonstrate this. Please join me, find uh, a space of wall in your room and start with your hips up against the wall. So your torso is also going to be up against the wall. And once your hips are really touching the base where the uh, base of the floor meets the wall, that's when you're going to swivel your tush and place your legs up the wall. And from this position, put one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. And if finding a space on your wall is already bringing up anxiety, don't worry about it. You can start in a traditional Shavasana or you can just bend your knees and put your shins on the chair. So lying on your back with your shins on the chair, that's also a totally fine way to start our practice today. Inhale through your nose. and exhale out your mouth. <laughs> Inhale. And exhale. Take a few more cycles of breath at your pace, just letting your mind settle, let your heart rate settle. And use the inhale to draw in air, oxygen, life and energy, the fuel that will propel you through your practice. And use the exhale to let go of the distractions, just one at a time. Let's join back together collectively and virtually in that cycle of breath. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. One more time in this position, inhale. And a lion's breath exhale, which means you stick out your tongue and with an audible, audible exhale, release that breath. And take your legs off the wall and come to lie down on your back with your knees bent, your feet on the ground. Have your rope or strap near you. And then take the rope or strap. And if you're not practicing with one, that's totally cool. I'll give you a modification in a moment. Loop the strap around the ball of your foot. 
we're coming into Sutta Padangustasana, a reclined hand to toe, to toe pose that many of us cannot reach our hand to our toes. And that's why we're using the strap. If you don't have the strap or belt or rope, just interlace your fingers and cradle the back of your thigh and draw your leg in towards your chest. And start to walk your hands up the strap to straighten your arms. And then often when we do this pose, I give you the option as to whether you want to straighten your opposite leg. I want to encourage you to do that today. It's still optional. Everything in your practice is optional. But I want to encourage you to straighten your left leg. Rotate the inner part of your left thigh down towards the ground. And let's take two more cycles of breath. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale. And exhale. And if you're practicing with the strap, take both ends in your right hand and start to draw your right foot and leg out to the right side of the room. You can bend your right elbow, lower your upper right arm onto the ground. And to bring balance to this pose, extend your left arm out to the left and turn your gaze out to the left. And so we're opening up the hip, we're stretching our right hamstring. And take one more cycle of breath. And then start to lift your right foot and leg back up towards the ceiling. Take your left hand on the left side of the strap if you're using the strap. And then bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground. Start to bend your right knee, remove the strap. And second side. So inhale as you start to loop the strap over the ball of your left foot. Your right foot is on the ground and your right knee is bent. Extend your left leg and foot up towards the ceiling. Imagine that you could stamp your left foot on the ceiling. And then I encourage you to straighten your right leg. You're on the heel of your right foot pressing your right foot towards the front of your room. Walk your hands up the strap if you're using one. If not, your hands are interlaced around the back of your left thigh. Keep your shoulder blades melted on the ground. So if you've walked up too high, you might need to back off. Let's take one more cycle of breath before we Move on. And if you're practicing with the strap, take both ends of the strap in your left hand and start to draw your left foot and leg out to the left side of the room. You can bend your left elbow, lower your upper left arm down onto the ground. And now to bring balance to this pose, to keep you on the middle way, extend your right arm out to the right and turn your gaze out to the right. And we'll take three cycles of breath. You're not rushing anywhere. So these breaths can be slow and rejuvenating. And then with your next inhale, 
Left foot and leg go back up towards the ceiling. Right hand on the right side of the strap, bend your right knee, right foot on the ground, start to bend your left knee, remove the ball, the strap and the ball of your left foot. And you can place the strap off to the side and draw both of your knees into your chest. And then interlace your fingers around your right knee and extend your left leg out towards the front of the room and start to really draw your right knee into your right armpit. Take another inhale. And exhale. And then with your next inhale, left knee comes in as you extend your right leg out to the front of the room. Draw your left knee close to your left armpit. And take another inhale. And exhale. Left foot on the ground, bend your right knee, right foot on the ground. And then in the spirit of moderation of finding this middle way and balance, take one of your blocks or books, and if you're not practicing with one, not a huge deal, place it underneath your hips, and then extend both legs up towards the ceiling. And inhale, lower your right leg a third of the way down towards the ground, and pause. Lower your right leg another third of the way down and pause. And then lower your right foot so that it's hovering just above the ground. And then inhale right leg up to meet your left leg. And then inhale left leg down a third of the way and pause. Inhale. Left leg lowers about two thirds of the way and pause. And then inhale, left leg lowers so that it's hovering above the ground. And then inhale, left leg up to meet your right leg. Both legs together. Inhale, both legs down about a third of the way. Engage your core. It's going to be a big note for today. Inhale. Both legs down about two thirds of the way. And then one more time as you inhale, both heels hovering just above the ground. And then inhale, both legs up. We're going to do it one more time. This time at your pace, you're going to do first your right leg and then your left leg and then both legs together. And you decide. You can use the block or not use the block. It's going to be more intense without the block. We're starting to build up some strength in our core. And make sure that your movements match your breath. And then once you finish the cycle, bend your knees, draw them into your chest. And you can rotate from right to left and left to right, massaging your lower back, releasing your spine. And in the spirit of Shavil Hazaho, of finding this golden way. You've started to work your core, work your abs. Let's bring a little bit of ease to the effort. Shift your hips over to the right. Let your knees fall over to the left. Let's take a supine twist. Left hand on top of your right knee, right arm extends out to the right. Three cycles of breath.
knees back up towards the ceiling. Shift your hips over to the left side of the mat and then let your knees descend over to the right. Right hand on top of your left knee, left arm out to the left and gaze out to the left. Three cycles of breath. Just observe your heart rate settling back down. And then roll over onto the right side of your torso and push yourself up. And immediately let's come into a tabletop position. And then widen your knees out, bring both toes to touch, shift your hip, hips back on your heels. Nestle your torso between your thighs, lower your forehead onto the ground, and release your forearms onto the ground. And come into balasana, into child's pose. Take a few cycles of breath. And so as we begin to unpack this idea of moderation, I want to share some words from Maimonides, one of the great Talmudic scholars, who says the path of the upright is one of moderation in every trait, so that each trait is equidistant from either extreme and not close to either. There, the early sages commanded us to put our traits before us constantly and direct them to the middle road so that we will be complete in our person. So as we flow through this practice, we're observing our thoughts, our feelings, our inclinations, and we're trying to direct them in towards the center. Allowing ourselves, like I said at the start, to go into the sphere of effort and then accepting the invitation to come back to ease. Come up onto your hands and knees into a tabletop position. Let's flow through a few cat and cow poses. Inhale, reach your heart and chest up, arch your back, lift your tush up as you come into a cow pose. And then exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest, into cow. Inhale into cat, cow, excuse me. Exhale into cat as you round your back. Inhale into cow and exhale into cat. And flow through that just another couple of cycles. Our spine is like the headquarters of your yogic infrastructure. So it's always helpful early in the practice to just stretch the spine. And then come back into a tabletop. And I wanna offer a modification. If any of you have um, an injury in your arm, sensitivity in your arms, I know a lot of us are uh, on the path to vaccination. Um, you can come onto your back for a modified version of bird dog pose. So come onto your back and you'll modify, you'll adapt what we're doing on our hands and knees. Inhale, stretch your right leg towards the back of the room. So if you're on your back, start by drawing your knees into your chest and then extend your right leg out and down. And you're lifting your right leg, those of you on your hands and knees, you're lifting your right leg up so that it's parallel to the ground, flexing your foot so that your toes point down. If you're on your back, let your right heel hover so that you're engaging your core. And then with your next 
Exhale, bend your right knee, lower it down. If you're on your back, draw your right knee into your chest. Inhale, extend your left leg back parallel to the ground. If you're on your back, extend your left leg out and down. Let your left heel hover just above the ground. Engage your core, draw your belly into your chest. Your gaze is down and a couple of inches in front of your hands. You'll find that if you lift your gaze towards the front of the room, there's a little bit of a strain in your neck. So protect your neck. And then with your next exhale, bend your left knee, lower your left knee down. We're gonna to start to add on. This is an opportunity to invite heat into your practice, but don't cross the threshold into pain. Inhale, right leg back. Stamp your right foot on the wall in back of you and exhale. Inhale, left arm forward. Palm faces in towards the midline. So if you're on your back, you want your right leg out and down and you're lifting your left arm up and back towards the back of the room. Engage your core to find stability. And then with your next exhale, left hand down, right knee down, second side. Inhale, left leg back. And if you're on your back, you're extending your left leg out and down, hovering your left heel above the ground. Those of you in tabletop, add your right arm forward. Those of you on your back, your right arm is going to lift up and back towards the back of the room. So it's basically the same pose, just some of us are on our hands and knees and others are on our backs. Engage your core. And then with your next exhale, lower your right hand, left knee down. If you're on your back, draw your knees into your chest. We're gonna turn this into a tricky cat and cow. So inhale, right leg back and exhale. Inhale, left arm forward and exhale. And modify accordingly if you're on your back. If you're on your hands and knees, inhale, draw your right knee and left elbow into the center of your chest as you round your back. And exhale, extend out. Inhale, belly and knee, excuse me, knee and elbow meet in the middle of your belly. Exhale, extend out. And please do that three more times. Inhale, you draw in. Exhale, you extend out. We all meet in extension. And then with your next exhale, left hand down, right knee down. Second side, inhale, left leg up and back and pause. Inhale, right arm forward and pause. And then tricky cat and cow. Inhale, right elbow, left knee meet in the center of your chest, round your back. Exhale, extend out and arch your back. Lift your heart and chest. Inhale, draw in. Exhale, extend out. Three more cycles. And then right hand down, left knee down, bring your big toes to touch, widen your knees, shift your hips back onto your heels and come back into Balasana, into child's pose. Let your heart rate settle. We'll be here for a few cycles of breath.
There is a wonderful saying in Sanskrit in the practice of yoga, stira sukha asanam, that one's connection to the earth should be steady and joyful. This idea of finding the balance between effort and ease. So at the risk of being redundant, we come into these moments of heat and challenge where we're engaging our core, activating our body, driving up our heart rate. And then we take some time for rest and relaxation and to bring it down. It's that balance that keeps us on that Shavil Hazaho, the golden way. Take another couple cycles of breath. And as you're flowing through this practice, you might want to identify in what area of your life could you benefit from following the middle way, from bringing center into your practice, into your life? Is there an area of your life where you're too far in one extreme? Take another inhale and exhale. Start to walk your fingers forward, forearms lift off the mat, press your palms into the mat, spread your fingers, index finger points forward, and then lift your forehead briefly past your tabletop as you tuck your toes and shift your hips up and back. And we're in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. This is not going to be an Adho Mukha Svanasana focused yoga practice. So this is gonna be one of just a couple that we'll take. Root your palms into the ground, rebound up through your arms, and really shift your hips up and back. Start to lower your heels down towards the ground, and then walk your hands back to your feet. Find yourself in Uttanasana in a forward fold. Clasp both hands around your right ankle and shift your torso so that it's aligned with your right leg. And inhale. And exhale. Release your hands and clasp them around your left ankle. And shift your torso so that it's aligned with your left leg. Take a cycle of breath. Left hand on left ankle, right hand on right ankle. Your torso is in the center. Hands on hips, elbows draw in towards each other. As you slowly start to lift up one vertebra at a time, keeping your gaze down on the ground. And then lift your head up and walk towards the front of your mat and stand in Tadasana, in mountain pose. Big toes touch, heels a couple of inches apart. And if you find that you're a little wobbly, you can step your feet apart hip width, create a little bit more space and stability. So you pick your version, rooting down through your feet, lifting your kneecaps up, Lengthening through all four sides of your torso. Spread your collarbones and draw your shoulder blades together. Relax your tummy. Lift the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. 
And let's take a few cycles of half sun salutation. Surya Namaskar. Inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms float down. Again, inhale, arms up, Utita Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding forward. Inhale into Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet. Uttita Hastasana, you rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms come back down into Tadasana. One more time, I'm going to cue just the breath. Inhale, and exhale. The movement is really secondary to the breathing. Inhale, and exhale. And inhale and exhale. Back in Tadasana and step your feet apart so that you're about three to four feet apart. It's all relative to your height. Those of you that are vertically challenged, your feet will be a little bit closer together. And have your chair. I want to encourage you to have your chair um, towards the top of the mat. I'm going to move mine this way so that I'm mirroring you. And then hands on your hips, draw your elbows in towards each other. And inhale, lengthen up through your chest and exhale, folding forward. Prasarita Padottanasana A. And let your hands lower from your hips down to the ground, come onto your fingertips. And if you're having a hard time reaching the floor, widen your stance. And those of you that can press your palms into the ground, please do so and walk your hands back so that your fingers are aligned with your big toes. And Musar scholar, Alan Marinus, shares that the Musar teachers tell us that the secret to becoming masters of moderation is to cultivate sensitivity to the inner processes of desire as they arise within us. I want to say that again. The secret to becoming a master of moderation is to cultivate sensitivity to the inner processes of desire as they arise within us. One of the gifts of yoga is the opportunity to lean into your sense of mindfulness, to become more self-aware, to observe your thoughts as they arise, to observe your inclinations as they pass over you. And to be able to discern what thoughts, inclinations, behaviors are serving you well, and which you might shed. And one of the measures that we can use to exercise good judgment is that of moderation. Hands on your hips, elbows draw in towards each other. And inhale to lift your torso up. And then rotate your left leg out to the left side of the room. Rotate your back foot in about 45 degrees. Arms come out in a T position. So you want your chair out to the left so that it's there waiting for you. 
We're not going to use it quite yet, but we'll use it soon. Have it a few inches, maybe even uh, a foot in front of your left foot. So arms are out in a T position. Inhale, shift forward through your left arm. Your hips go to the back of the room. And then you're going to lower your left hand to your left ankle and sweep your top arm up and find yourself in triangle pose, trikonasana. Inhale and exhale and mindfully rotate your left hip back as your top hip rotates forward. It's going to help you come into the twist. And now we're going to add, those of you who are ready for it, we're going to add a little bit of heat to the practice. We're going to move from trikonasana, which is triangle pose, to utita trikonasana, which is extended triangle pose. So as you inhale, rotate your top arm towards the side of the room. Rotate your palm, your hand, so that your palm faces towards the back. Your gaze is up towards the ceiling. Take another inhale and exhale. And now to really activate the core, inhale, reach your bottom arm up and out so that your arms are parallel. Imagine that you had a block between your hands or a beach ball between your hands. Take another couple cycles of breath. And then if you're in this extension, inhale, lower your right hand back down to your right ankle. Inhale, top arm up. So you're back in regular trikonasana. And now turn your gaze down towards the ground. Look at your left foot. Start to bend your left knee. Use your back foot as a spring to push yourself up. Place your hand on the seat of the chair in front of you and come into Ardha Chandrasana. Your back leg is lifted and parallel to the ground. Your top arm is reaching up towards the ceiling. And the gift of using the chair as a prop is that it just helps to make the pose more accessible. One more inhale. And exhale, start to bend your left knee. Step slowly your back foot down. Come back into trikonasana, into your triangle pose. And then inhale, lift your torso up. Arms are out again in that T position. And exhale, hands on your hips. Rotate your left foot to be parallel with your right foot. And you're back in this wide-legged standing pose. Grab your chair if you're practicing with one. Shift it to the other side of the mat. A foreshadow as to what's coming. No surprises here. But before we do that, that was a good amount of effort. Let's bring some ease back to our practice. So you can repeat Prasarita Padottanasana A, the one we did previously, or we can try a different version. Yogi's choice. I'm going to do Prasarita Padottanasana D. Inhale, lift your chest and heart up. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Lower your torso so that it's parallel to the ground. And then take your second and third finger, use it as a hook to grab onto your big toes. Have a slight bend in your elbows. And then lower your head down towards the ground. And this is Prasarita Padottanasana D. Wide-legged forward fold variation D. Take a few cycles of breath. And 
And then release your second and third finger from your big toe. Hands flow back up to your hips. And inhale, lift your torso up. So as we're practicing this Musar trait of moderation through mindfulness, being aware of where we're at with our heat, with our relaxation, with our indulgence, indulgence with our resistance, we're going to move into the second side. And just observe your behavior, observe your choices. And ultimately, are they, when you combine all these poses together, are they keeping you in that middle way? Rotate your entire right leg out. Back foot in 45 degrees. You want the heel of your front foot aligned with the arch of your back foot. Arms out into that T position. Same sequence, we're gonna start with Trikonasana. So reach your right arm forward, your hips go back. And then exhale, lower your right hand to your ankle or your shin and lift your top arm up. Rotate your chest out. I'm going to offer the same adjustment as before. So as you inhale, rotate your right hip back and notice as your top left hip moves forward. It's a good way to self-adjust in Trikonasana. And then I invite you to move on. Let's turn this into Utita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. You're going to rotate your top arm forward over your head and ear, your arm straightens, palm faces towards the back of the room. And now let's engage our core, inhale, float your bottom arm up to be parallel with your top arm. Imagine that you're grabbing onto that block or that beach ball, arms work towards straight, Two more cycles of breath. And then with your next exhale, right hand comes back down to your right shin or ankle. Top arm comes up. You're back in Trikonasana. Turn your gaze down. Look a few inches in front of your right foot. Bend your, into your right knee as you push off of your back foot and then place your right hand on the seat of the chair. This is a modified Ardha Chandrasana half moon pose. And if you wobble and come out of it, just come back in. Your back leg lifts up so that it's parallel to the ground. And you've worked these kinds of extensions earlier in the practice to prepare you. Take one more cycle of breath. And then turn your gaze back down. Look at the seat of the chair if you're practicing with one. And then bend your left, your right knee, lower your back foot back down, and find yourself back in trikonasana, in triangle pose. And then inhale, lift your torso up. Exhale, hands onto your hips. Rotate your right foot to be parallel with your left foot. And then step back into Tadasana. Excellent, excellent job. Come to the top of your mat. Push your chair out. And if you're practicing with blocks or books, please take one. Place the Block between your thighs or your books between your thighs. And if you're not practicing with a block or book, step your feet together. But if you are practicing with one by putting the block between your thighs, your feet aren't going to be together. And we are going to practice coming into Utkatasana, chair pose or more literally lightning pose. Inhale, bend into your knees, shift your hips back, lift your arms up to be parallel to your ears, and then hug the block as if you're rotating your inner thighs 
down towards the ground. That's the action of your thighs in this chair pose. And inhale, sit a little bit deeper and exhale. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale, lift up and arms come down. Taking a break in Tadasana, coming back into the center. And adding on, I want you to be rock stars, Utkatasanas. I want you to be great with your Utkatasana pose. If you have the luxury of having a second block or book, place it between your palms, just like that. If not, you've worked on your thighs, so you can take the block out of your thighs and place it between your palms. So working, adapting, making it work with whatever props you have. This time, we're not only gonna work on the actions of our thighs, we're gonna work on the actions of our arms, straightening our arms. So block between your palms, extend your palms out in front of you. Your palms and arms are out. You're standing up straight. And then inhale, bend into your knees, shift your hips back. As you start to lift your arms up, press your palms into the block and start to rotate your inner upper arms up and out. So you're rotating your outer upper arms down and your inner upper arms up. Press your palms into the block. One more inhale. And exhale, straighten your legs, torso and arms lift up. And then exhale, lower your arms down. Remove both blocks. We're gonna do it again, but this time without the props. Step your feet together, big toes touch, heels a couple of inches apart. And let's take a couple cycles of breath in Tadasana. So we're practicing this way of moderation. We're not spending our entire class in Shavasana lying down on our back or just standing in Tadasana. We're moving towards one end of the spectrum to invite in heat, and then we come back to the other end of the spectrum to invite in ease, the combination of effort and ease. Inhale, Utkatasana, bend into your knees, arms lift, frame your ears. Inhale, and exhale, and inhale, and exhale, and then inhale, bend deeper and deeper. You can lift your heels up, you're in a squat, and then lower onto your tush, bend your knees and lift your shins up, arms reach out. You're in Navasana, in boat pose. Your back is flat. And then inhale, lower halfway down, Ardha Navasana. So legs extend out straight, heels hover above the ground. Your lower back is on the ground, but your upper back is raised. Turn your gaze to look at your toes. And then inhale, come back up into Navasana. We're gonna do that a couple more times. Inhale, Ardha Navasana. Exhale, Navasana. Inhale, Ardha Navasana. Exhale, Navasana. Inhale, Ardha Navasana. In five, four, three, Engage your core, two, one, release. Passing through this Shavasana. 
Excellent job. Take one more cycle of breath. Don't want you to think we're in our final Shavasana. And then bend your knees. Shins are parallel to the ground and keep your knees stacked above your hips. Don't draw your knees into your chest. And in fact, for a moment, take the palms of your hands, press them into the bottom part of your thigh. So just above your knee, which from this direction, it actually looks like your palms are just below your knee. And I want you to press your palms into your knees and press your knees back into your palms. Create that field of energy and then release your palms. Knees stay stacked over your hips. Interlace your fingers behind your head. And then inhale, lift your chest up. And we're going to take several rounds of yoga bicycles. So inhale, left leg extends forward, left knee to right excuse me, left elbow to right knee. Inhale, left knee comes back in. And exhale. Inhale, right knee to right elbow to left knee. Extend your right leg out. Inhale, right knee into your chest. Come back to the middle. Inhale, left leg out, left elbow to right knee. And exhale, left knee in. Inhale, right leg out, right elbow to left knee. And exhale, come back to the center. Take about five more rounds. One round equals two sides. Moving at your pace, working your core, Like everything in the sequence of yoga, this will serve us as we come into our peak pose. And then draw your knees into your chest. Lower your upper back and head back down. And rotate from right to left and left to right. Rewarding yourself, giving your lower back this massage. And then stop in the center and switch the momentum to be back and forward and forward and back. And build up enough momentum that you can push yourself up into Utkatasana. You might be laughing. And then stand up straight. And everyone meet in Tadasana. And if you are just standing up regularly, that is totally cool. So standing in Tadasana towards the top of the mat. Inhale. And exhale. Slow your heart rate back down. Let's pause for a moment to come back to our intention. Rabbi Yisrael Salanter shares this about the idea of Shavil Hazahov, this idea of moderation. Now the Rambam writes that a person must conduct herself according to the middle path. Yet is there anyone who can fathom this? And is there a seer who can declare, here's the midpoint? This matter cannot be proven by syllogism, nor even by deductive reasoning. 
Rather, it can only be determined by a wise person using their faculty of common sense, each according to her place and time. The Athenian sages ask, where is the center of the world? Meaning, what is the way to determine the middle path? Rebbe Yehoshua replied here, meaning according to the judgment of your intellect. What I glean from this is that we need to use our sense of mindfulness, each one of us, to employ our intellect and determine the middle path that is right for us. We need to guard ourselves from either end of the extreme and also give ourselves permission to venture out of that center so that we can come back to the middle. It's a balancing act. Foreshadow into our peak pose, a balancing act. Okay, so we're gonna do one more prep pose in order to come into our peak pose. I wanna encourage you to have your chair or blocks at the top of your mat for a modification. It's part of how we're finding our center. So standing at the top of your mat, place both hands on your hips, step your left leg back and find yourself in a heel to heel alignment. So your right leg is forward and straight, your back leg is, your back foot is turned in about 45 degrees and it's straight. And then inhale, bend into your right knee, arms lift up, come into Virabhadrasana one, rooting your back foot down into the ground. Your torso leans forward slightly, your arms lift up so that they're parallel to your ears. Take another inhale and exhale. And now we're gonna come into our peak pose, lift your back heel up, come onto your left toes. So now you're in a crescent position, lower your arms, grab onto either side of the chair, and then using your left toes as your spring, push yourself up into Virabhadrasana three, warrior three pose. Your left leg is extended up and back parallel to the floor. Your torso is folding forward. And you have options. If you feel like you don't need the chair, you can press your palms together in the center of your chest. You can extend your arms back towards the back of the room, or you can extend your arms forward. Draw your right hip back. Take one more inhale and exhale. Grabbing onto the seat of the chair, bend your right knee, step your left foot back, come onto your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. So you're back in that crescent position. Lower your left heel down. Now you're back in Virabhadrasana one. Lower your hands to your hips, straighten your right leg, and then step your left foot forward. Good job. Second side, inhale, right leg back. Right foot turns in 45 degrees towards the top right corner of your mat. Using your hips, using your hands, excuse me, center your hips towards the top of the mat. And then inhale, bend into your left knee as you extend your arms out and up into Virabhadrasana one, warrior one pose. Take another cycle of breath and then start to lower your torso halfway down, lower your hands onto the seat, pick your right heel up, and then inhale, push off of your right toes, come back into that Virabhadrasana three. This time, your left foot is your foundation. So really pressing 
into all four sides of your left foot. Right leg extends back and start to row rotate your inner right thigh up towards the ceiling. And you can decide if you wanna add on a little bit more heat. You can release your hands from the seat, press your palms together. You can extend your arms towards the back of the room. You can extend your arms towards the front of the room. Take another inhale, engaging your core. You've prepped for this. And then hands back onto the seat of the chair. Bend into your left knee. Step your right foot back, come onto your right toes. And then lower your right heel to the ground. Inhale, torso and arms lift up. You're back in your Virabhadrasana one. Straighten your left leg hands to your hips, and then step your right foot forward. Excellent, excellent job. Pause for a moment in Tadasana. And there is a yoga teacher who says, mindfulness and moderation are key to pursuing the right use of energy. Brahmacharya is about paying attention to how you use your energy in everyday life. It's about providing your mind and body with what it needs and enjoys without going to a place of excess. Take another cycle of breath. And then as you inhale, bend into your knees, come into a squat position, come onto your tush, extend your legs out, inhale to lift your arms up, exhale, fold forward, Paschimottanasana, forward fold, inhale, and exhale, Three more cycles of breath. Release your hands from your feet, lift your torso up, bend your knees. Plant your feet on the ground, arms reach out in front of you, and use your core, engage your core to lower down onto your back in five, four, three, two, one, and draw your knees into your chest. Bring your arms inside of your legs, but grab onto your outer feet. And lift your feet up towards the ceiling, come into happy baby. And then extend your right leg out and down, left leg out and down. Let your heels, your ankles roll open. Arms alongside your torso, palms facing up, and settle into Shavasana.
Start to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. And let your knees fall over to the right side of the room. Come on to the right side of your torso. And push yourself up into Sukhasana, into an easeful position. If you have any compression in your lower back, you might want to sit up on a block or a book. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. Let your eyes close for a moment. Let's end the practice with a moment for Svadhyaya, for self-reflection. I wanna encourage you to ask yourself a few questions. Where do you spend your energy? Ask yourself, when does my energy get drained? Where in my life am I skilled at practicing moderation? And where in my life could I practice more moderation? Those of you who have a journal practice or a poetry practice or any sort of writing or music artistic practice, I invite you to explore those questions for your self-reflection. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Take a big inhale. And exhale. Lower your chin to your chest. Shabbat shalom, namaste. Thank you so much.